In order to protect the cells from the damaging acidity of hydrochloric acid, the parietal cell has to produce the components of hydrochloric acid separately. Histamine, gastrine, and acetylcholine will bind to receptors on the parietal cell. This initiates the hydrochloric acid production process. All three chemicals have to bind to the cell in order for this process to occur. Otherwise, hydrochloric acid production won't happen. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the cell and the enzyme carbonic anhydrase catalyzes the reaction between carbon dioxide and water to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid dissociates into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion. As bicarbonate ion accumulates into the cell, bicarbonate ion is ejected through the basal cell membrane into the capillary blood. As a result, blood draining from the stomach is more alkaline than the blood serving it. This is known as the alkaline tide. The bicarbonate chloride antiporter in the plasma membrane exchanges bicarbonate molecules going out for chloride ions coming in. This is known as a chloride shift. ATP will bind to the hydrogen potassium ATPase, where the potassium ions are countertransported into the parietal cell in exchange for hydrogen ions. Chloride will simply diffuse through the cell membrane and enter the gastric gland. In the gastric gland, chloride ions will combine with hydrogen ions to form hydrochloric acid, which will then be secreted into the stomach. So next then, following the cephalic phase, the gastric phase occurs. Gastric phase, the duration for it is three to four hours. This is a lot more complicated. So the stimuli include distension of the stomach. So remember, gastric phase. This phase originates because of the stimulus in the stomach. All right, so distension of the stomach, elevated pH in the stomach. Okay, so more basic, if you will. You're also gonna have proteins that are in the stomach that are gonna help stimulate those chemoreceptors. And you'll also have amino acids because some of the proteins will be broken down into amino acids. So we know that the receptors then are the stretch receptors that detect the distension. Chemoreceptors are gonna detect the elevated pH, the proteins, and the amino acid that amino acids are in the lumen of the stomach. So then that's gonna generate short and long-term reflexes. Remember, if it's a long one, it involves the central nervous system. If it's short, it directly stimulates the enteric nervous system. We're gonna send action potentials then to the enteric nervous system, okay? So here we're gonna send action potentials to the submucosal plexus. Remember, that's in the submucosal gut wall. And we're also going to send a signal to the myenteric plexus. Remember that these, this is the nerve network that's part of the muscular, muscularis externa. Now, let's be a little more specific here. Because what the myenteric plexus is going to do, it's responsible for the mixing. It's responsible for the contraction of the smooth muscle so that you can mix the chyme that's in the stomach. Remember, you don't call it food anymore when it's in the stomach. You call it chyme. Now, meanwhile, then, you have the submucosal plexus, and once again, that's gonna stimulate mucus cells so that you synthesize and secrete mucus. It's gonna stimulate chief cells so you can synthesize and secrete pepsinogen. It's gonna stimulate the parietal cells so you can synthesize and secrete hydrochloric acid. And it's gonna stimulate the G cells so that you can synthesize and secrete gastrin. So again, gastrin's being produced, this hormone, by the stomach. Now, just like in the cephalic phase, gastrin can go into the bloodstream. And once it goes into the bloodstream, it will target those parietal cells and it will target those chief cells. And then you will also get synthesis and secretion of pepsinogen and HCL that way. So just like you did in the cephalic phase, here you have reinforcement of the parasympathetic nervous system once again. So the G cells aren't just stimulated by the submucosal plexus. They're also stimulated by partly digested peptides. So those themselves will stimulate the G cells and the G cells then will synthesize and secrete gastrin. What's gonna turn 
this system off? What turns off the gastric phase? One thing to think about is that the chyme won't stay forever in the stomach, right? The chyme's going to move into the duodenum. And when the chyme moves into the duodenum, the duodenum then is going to distend. There's going to be some distension of the duodenum. So that can help trigger the system and shut this system off. What if you had a sympathetic response? Would a sympathetic response shut this system down? Hopefully you answered yes. So if you have a sympathetic response, that'll shut the system down. And then what specifically turns off gastrin? So acidity in the lumen of the stomach. If the lumen of the stomach is acidic, that will inhibit gastrin. So now we need to remember that the chyme that was in the stomach is going to move into the duodenum, and then we're going to have the intestinal phase take place.